So thank you all, and thank you for being here. It's really grateful to present my work to all these beautiful brains. I have many friends here, and I'm very proud to present my work here. And um, I have two challenges, maybe. One is keeping you awake, and the second one is being as interested as I could have been my friend Peter. So what I'm, who am I? I'm working at Innovance, which I've just acquired by Red Hat. And uh, I'm working on performance at Innovance, so we are building clouds. And my work will be, why should I benchmark my infrastructure? Because we are here to set up a cloud. The cloud is made of a couple of servers, but if you want to install something on it, you have first to check that your hardware is healthy. Because if one component is failing, the complete platform could be slower. And if the platform is slower than expected, your user will complain about the performances. And you don't have to wait until the users are complaining to try to fix the issue. Because if you are waiting someone to be inside a VM to say, I do have some slow IOs, you're done. Because the path to go up to the hardware could be very long due to the virtualization or whatever. So the most important, the most important uh, item when you are benchmarking your platform, for my opinion, is to be as close as the hardware as possible. I don't want any fancy software that hides the defaults of the hardware. So I will select some kind of benchmark tools uh, to be as close as possible to the hardware. I want a result per component. Um, I mean, when I'm testing the CPU power, I just want a result about CPU power, not something which is mixing IOs on the disk, memory, on compute, on the CPU. For example, if you are trying to compute your CPU performance by uh, compressing a video, compressing a video means read a file on disk, load it into memory, and use some CPU power to transform something, and then to write the result to the disk. It's too much component of time. What I do want is to get the CPU power, and then, with another test, only the memory bandwidth. And then, with another test, only the disk IO. So we are trying to uh, cut down everything as possible to split all the results in, uh, on a per component basis. Um, an important point also is to associate your result with um, your setup configuration, because the result itself doesn't mean anything. The result is part of a context at one time. At one time, you have a particular kernel, some kernel common lines, uh, you have a particular distro or whatever, so you need to collect all this information to get your, real, your technical results associated to a context. So it's important when you're benchmarking to kill all these traces amongst time to be able to say, okay, I was at this performance at this time in this context. Um, for my opinion, the benchmark should be time-based because many benchmark tools I know are using about data. You are asking the system to use to process one gig of data, for example. But on a slow system or on a fast system, the benchmark can last one second or one minute. If you are comparing the two results, more likely you are comparing a one second to a minute item. And in one second, you can have maybe some effect cache, uh, cache effects, but not in one minute. So it could depend. So it's very nice to have a time-based benchmark, and it's also easier for yourself to project in time. I know that benchmarking my system will last 10 minutes or 5 minutes or whatever. It will not last 1 hour or 2 hours. I want a quick result that if give me a raw approximation of does my system is running perfectly or not. Uh, the reproducibility is very important, and it's more likely linked to don't trust the humans. I mean, if you want to test your platform the same way every time, human cannot make it, because you will always miss one parameter, or you will not perform the test the same way, you are always changing the stuff. So it has to be automated, and it has to be done um, using an operating system which is also built by a bot. I mean, my system is taking an automation tool that generates the benchmarking operating system, so I, so I can save, I can reuse the same operating system in 10 years to do the same benchmark on the same machine, to have the same um, basis for comparing my results. And as all the benchmarking is done automatically, I'm 100% sure that all the options, all the environments are always the same. And so the results are 
comparable over time. So in our case, it's very useful because I'm benchmarking the platform before the installation on the client side. And then if later the client is complaining, I can run exactly the same benchmark series one year after and to say, no, at the benchmark level, I'm always the same. So maybe it's a, a kernel patch that introduces something or it's an application that generates another load which breaks the performance or whatever. So I can prove that at the bare metal point of view, I do have the same results. And also, sorry, VLM of the system. My benchmarks is running into my operating system. So there is no current tab in my back, which is killing the IO because something is running on the system. So I want to be 100% sure that nothing is running else me. And this is my context. Um, so typically speaking, I just have my slash in it, which is mine, which is a bash script on that or Python stuff. So that's always the same and nothing else run on the system than me. So testing the platform. So we are using a, a Pokemon balance to result. Oh, we are really <laughs> using that. Um, so this is a, a layered view of an infrastructure. So at the bottom part, you have the system, so which is a hypervisor with this memory, networking, or whatever. Then you have some network interconnection, and then you have the OpenStack stuff, which is doing some virtualization of different layer, networking or uh, computing. And at the top, you have the VMs that's running on top of this hardware. And every single VM is also providing memory on storage, which is almost virtualized. What I'm doing, I'm first, on the hypervisor point of view, I'm testing one core per socket to get the raw performance of one socket uh, one core per socket. And then I'm doing the same on all the sockets at the same time. And the goodness of that, I can study the scalability of the CPU power on the system. For example, on a recent um, Intel processor, you can get something like 90% of efficiency. So running eight, four cores on the socket is providing you as much as 90% of the performance of one core. I mean, in addition, so uh, you have roughly f four more times power. I'm doing then the same with the memory. So I'm checking all, how much bandwidth a single core can get up to the memory from every single socket. And that gave me roughly um, the bandwidth, the maximum bandwidth the complete socket can achieve. Then I'm doing the same for all the CPU cores at the same time. On this way, I'm able to see how much bandwidth at the maximum each core can gain at one time. And this is also give me the scalability uh, of the bandwidth memory, the memory bandwidth, sorry. And then I'm using the same procedure for the disks. So I'm checking disk per disk, what is the raw performance of it in various uh, options. So it's always directly on the block device. I'm not using file systems because I'm taking care of hardware. And I'm using uh, several patterns, a random one and a sequential one in read and write. On this four scenarios gives me a good impression of does the disk is running like a, an HDD or like an SSD. And if it's an SSD, is it a good one or a bad one or whatever. And then one all the six disks on this platform have been benchmarked. I'm doing the same, but on the six disks at the same time. And as I do know the performance on one disk at one time, loading all of them at the same time gives me the information of how much the controller is hitting the highest. If I get 100 points of performance per disk, I should have 600 points of performance for this disk. But on the system I saw, you are losing most likely of 10 or 15% of the performance. So your starting point when your system is running is not six times the performance of one disk but it's this performance minus 10 or 15%. On using this test, you can estimate how much the controller is a bottleneck on the system or not. And then about the networking, um, what I'm doing is benchmarking CPU disk is more likely benchmarking your own system. When you are benchmarking the network, you have the guy in front of you, or the guys in front of you, there's many, but also the switch, which is interconnecting all of you. And the switch could be a limiting factor. So what I'm doing here is I'm orchestrating the network benchmarks. In fact, I'm asking all my system to start at the same time and to 
load all the other systems simultaneously. So my first server is benchmarking the two other one. On the one in the middle is benchmarking the two others. On the right one is benchmarking the two left one. And they are all doing that simultaneously. And so I'm able to compare uh, the correlated load that we had and the fairness between each stream between two servers and then the, co the total uh, bandwidth we got on this system. And this is done automatically and you can also study the ramp up. Uh, you can describe some subgroups. You want to test from one server up to 10 or to 20 and then you will have the result using a curve of what was the expected bandwidth at that. The resulting, sorry, bandwidth when scanning up the number of nodes by using this synchronous load on all the nodes at the same time. About the tooling, I'm using Hedeploy, which is a Nidomance project, which is open source. And this project, um, project uh, gives me all I need, roughly, to boot an operating system, which is live, which is a uh, controlled version, and where nothing runs else me. Um, I'm using, so my particular tool is called AHC for automatic health check. Uh, so it's part of Hedeploy. And today I'm embedding uh, a couple of benchmark. It's just a, a choice. It could be health. It could be some other. Um, for now, I'm using Sysbench FIO. I'm part of the FIO project, so for me, it's easier also to integrate. And I've been contributing some components to it, and the NetPipe stuff for the performance. So analyzing the result is a tricky side because on the real case, I have 20 servers to benchmark. I run all my benchmark for all these components onto the service, but each, each single server is give me 500 results. So when you have 500 results per 20 service, and the question is, is it good? So and so is it, I don't know, because I'm a human and I, can all, I cannot read all these numbers. So I've been developing a tool which is called Cardiff, uh, which I'm taking all this information to compare the results. And the first task of Cardiff is checking as I told before, the context. Does all my server are the same or not? Because if I want to compare the performance of first to be sure that they are all the same. If one doesn't have the same number of memory banks, if you don't have the same number of disk, if it's not the same release of the hardware, you cannot compare the results because you are comparing peers with iPod or whatever. So what my tool is first checking all the commonalities between all the hardware and said, okay, all these services are perfectly the same, so we can compare all of them together. And these servers are the same, so we can compare all of them. So in my 20 case server benchmark, I had three different kinds of service. Um, 15 were exactly the same. There were the compute nodes, and then had some backup uh, nodes, which had much more or less, uh, much more disks, and one control node, which had much more, uh, much less memory. And in fact, my tool has been split up all these three kinds of service, and so it analyzes them the performance. And I think I'm right doing this way because, for example, by dividing by two the number of memory banks into the server, the memory bandwidth was much more lower. Um, if I didn't have split this service, I would have saw some servers very performance, one very slow, and I would say, okay, this one is slow because it's bad. No, it's not bad. It's because it has much more or less RAM banks. So this is a kind of protection to avoid misunderstanding of the results. And I'm computing that the min max average and the more, most important, for my opinion, is the standard deviation. Standard deviation gives you roughly the answer is if I'm picking two systems, how much different, how much different they are. So because the average doesn't tell you anything. If you have a classes with one guy which is zero point, one which is 20 points, the average is 10. No one is 10. There is one which is zero and the one which is 20. So the deviance will give you more information about the distribution of everyone around the mini. And so in that case, the mean is 10, but the deviance is 10. Because from the, the, the mean, you have 10 point, uh, one is 10 point uh, over, and one it is 10 point under. On this information, if you have 10 point of deviance on 10 point of meaning, it means your result is totally crap because it's too much distributed. So this is non-information for uh, getting the consistency of your results. 
because you are in a cloud stuff, you are supposed to run on the same hardware, and the same hardware is supposed to provide the same performance. So this is why standard deviation should be as small as possible. So now getting into the cloud, I have four minutes to complete. Um, now I do understand the bare metal performance. I'm checking everything, it's healthy, I can install my OpenStack stuff on it. But when it's done, what is the resulting performance of my VMs? Because the VMs is what I'm selling to my customers. Um, from the starting point of my presentation, I said, I don't want the guy from the VM complaining because the VMs are slow. So what I will do is uh, reusing, uh, I will reuse my same benchmark tool, but from the VM point of view. So I will just reuse the same mechanism. It's the same operating system. It's the same metrics. It's the same benchmarks. We are still benchmarking memory, CPU storage, but from the VM point of view. The main difficulty is now we have to orchestrate them. Uh, we need orchestration. Because when I was benchmarking my service, the bare metal one, they are running in standalone. So there is no need to be orchestrated. When I'm running 100 VMs on three or four hypervisors, if I want to see the effect of the load of these VMs to the hypervisor, I have to ensure that the load is perfectly done at the same time and no VM is lagging or no VM is completed the benchmark too late. Because if I want to sum up all the results together, I have to be sure they started at the same time and they ended up at the same time also. And if so, I can take all the individual results um, compute them all together and to compare them against the performance I had at the bare metal point of view. And this way I can tell from the bare metal point of view up to the VMs I've lost this amount of power. Um, it's not very interesting. So this is it. The benchmark is now running from the VM point of view. On here, I do have a very small Python servers from somewhere, it's in the VM, it's a physical server. And this one will orchestrate the load between all the other VMs. And at the end, um, I will come back later on that. At the end, you can make some plotting. You can pick up, for example, this is a network bench I done from the VM directly. Uh, I had a performance issue, for example, uh, the right uh, the red line was running, uh, the, uh, sorry, the green one was running with an MPU at 100 and 500. And this is the job duration. So I've been requesting the green line. My job is supposed to be to last uh, 10 seconds. And when running at the solar MPU, the job is taking much more time than expected. And so I've been working, running the same benchmark, but using a different MPU. And in that case, the performance on the meaning time was much more consistent. It means that the MTU and the value track on the time the benchmarking last on the system due to fragmentation. So it's kind of a way to show you that using that methodology, you can describe a benchmark, you run it on your platform, it's all perfectly automated, it provides you the result, and then you can change one trick on your one tuning on your system, perform the same benchmark again. And then you can compare the results. And thanks to Cardiff, you are providing just the true raw results. And it will make you the graph about the meaning, the deviance, or whatever, to help you understand does your change on the hardware or on the system tuning was a benefit or a loss to the global performance. I think I will be over to stay on time. If you have questions, I can answer them quickly to let some time to my friends and after. In fact, uh, the question is that I am considering migrating the VMs. In fact, we are distributing the VMs for the benchmarking on the complete platform. And then from my benchmark tool, you are selecting some by providing some rules. So you are selling, this is the kind of VMs I'm interested in. For example, this hypervisor or the VMs that have this property on this VMs will be um, taken on benchmark together. So my benchmark almost considers that nothing runs on the system. 
because you are, you are at a time when you are setting up the platform and want to check, uh, check deeply what is the resulting performance. So at that time, there is no user VMs running on the system, only yours. And then you are picking the one you want regarding your hardware, uh, your benchmark description. We are glue them together and then do the simultaneous load to compute the, the results. I think I'm over time. I would be happy to have some talks later if someone is interested in. And I will let uh, the place for my friends and after. Thank you all.